Hi everyone, and welcome back to another special edition of Ask a Ranger. My name is Ranger Leah. I'm a park ranger at Kings Mountain National Military Park. And for this special edition of Ask a Ranger, I'm teaming up once again with my fellow rangers at the other southern campaign of the American Revolution Parks Group sites to bring you Clash of the Commanders where we will be answering the question, who is the most significant patriot leader in the backcountry? We were able to choose who we believed answered the question best, and we will be presenting our cases over a series of videos uh, over the next several days. So for my answer to this question, I present to you William Campbell, Brigadier General William Campbell who was the overall commander at my battle at Kings Mountain. Here's his portrait here, who is actually his grandson rather than him. There were no uh, portraits of him made at the time, but it was said that his grandson looked a lot like him. So William Campbell. To give a little bit of background about William Campbell, he is born in 1745 in Augusta County, Virginia to Scots-Irish parents. He's educated, and he is experienced in civic and military leadership. So when he's 22, he moves down to the frontier settlement on the Holston River near present-day Abingdon, Virginia, and he pretty quickly becomes a captain uh, of the local militia, serves in Lord Dunmore's war against the Shawnee and the Mingo Indian nations, and he's also a local justice uh, in the local court system. So he has experience in both the civic world and the military world. Now, when tensions with Great Britain start to reach ahead, he is one of the signers of the Finn Castle Resolves, uh, which are signed in January 1775. Uh, he, along with some other members of the local committee of safety. Now, the Finn Castle Resolves were uh, a letter that was sent to the Continental Congress uh, it was basically the first declaration of support, or one of the first declarations of support for armed resistance to British rule, to the British crown. Uh, so right away, he's on the side of, of revolution from the very beginning. Uh, in September 1775, uh, he raises a company of riflemen and marches to Williamsburg, Virginia, which was the capital at the time. Uh, and he becomes uh, an officer in the 1st Virginia Provisional Regiment, uh, which is commanded by Patrick Henry. And uh, shortly after that, he actually marries Patrick Henry's daughter, Elizabeth. Uh, but he transfers to the Continental Army um, in February 1776 and becomes an officer in the Virginia Continental Line um, and serves throughout 1776 until in October, he requests to return home to Southwest Virginia. Uh, that area, the frontier area there, is facing uh, the threat of loyalist insurrection and also uh, tribal attacks out on the frontier. Those Indian nations that are out on the border are attacking frontier settlements. So he's granted permission to return home, and he uh, begins defending um, his frontier home, begins defending Southwest Virginia. Uh, when Washington County, Virginia is formed in 1777, uh, he becomes a lieutenant colonel in the militia. And then by August of 1780, or excuse me, April of 1780, he has become a colonel in the militia, and he has also been elected to the Virginia House of Delegates. So once again, he's serving both those civilian roles and those military roles. Now his shining moment, though, comes in the Kings Mountain campaign. When John Sevier and Isaac Shelby of the Nolichucky and Watauga River settlements send a message to Campbell to join the march against Patrick Ferguson, He's initially hesitant because he doesn't want to leave Southwest Virginia uh, unguarded, but he does eventually agree to join the campaign. And he comes with 200 Virginia riflemen to the rendezvous at Sycamore Shoals on September 25th, 1780. Um, pretty quickly, 200 more 
militia follow behind, they were sent by Colonel Arthur Campbell because he didn't think the initial 200 would be enough. So it ends up that Campbell is commanding 400 Virginia riflemen along the march to find Ferguson. Um, now, when they narrow down the night before the battle at Cowpens uh, to 910 men, out of that 400, 200 Virginia militia are chosen to actually take part in the battle. But before they get to Kings Mountain, uh, William Campbell is elected the overall commander of the Patriot Army. Um, he's elected because they have come the farthest, he has come the farthest with his men, and also because he commands the largest uh, portion of the Patriot Army. So when they get to Kings Mountain, uh, when the battle breaks out on the afternoon of October 7, 1780, Campbell's men are the first to get into position. And when they start assaulting the hill, William Campbell throws off his coat and yells at the top of the, his lungs to his men, Here they are, my brave boys. Shout like hell and fight like devils. Now as they begin assaulting the hill, uh, and Ferguson and the Loyalists organize, Campbell's men are the first to receive a Loyalist bayonet charge. Uh, from the Provincials that are with Ferguson and probably some Loyalist militia as well. Now some of his men do try to stand um, instead of running and uh, breaking and running, but the men that try to stand are run through. Riflemen are um, very vulnerable to bayonet charges. There's not a lot to defend themselves. Tomahawks or long knives are not as, uh, not as effective against bayonet charges. So most of uh, Cam Campbell's Virginians retreat. They run down the hill, uh, through the across the ravine, and up onto the next hill. But the provincials that are running after them with a the bayonet, uh, in order to maintain their position on top of the ridge, they stop and they wheel about and head back up the hill. And when they do that, this is a critical moment. Because up until this point, when Patriot militia have been faced with bayonet charges uh, in the Southern Campaign, they've run and they've not looked back. But Campbell and some other officers who are mounted, uh, they're about halfway between their men and the Loyalists that are uh, going back up the hill. Uh, they're calling out to their men to stop. Uh, what Campbell actually is quoted as having said is, Halt! Return, my brave fellows, and you will drive the enemy immediately. And his militia do something the Patriot militia haven't done yet. They stop, they turn around, they reload, and they assault the hill again. Campbell and his personal brand of leadership, his charisma, have managed to convince his men that it is worthwhile to assault the hill again. Once again, one of the first times that Patriot militia have done that in the South. Now they continue assaulting the hill. Um, uh, I do want to insert a, a nice quote from uh, Lyman Draper, the historian, uh, author of the seminal work on Kings Mountain, Kings Mountain and its heroes. Uh, what he wrote about Campbell in this moment when he gets his men to turn around in the bayonet charge. He says, everything depended upon successfully rallying the men when first driven down the mountain. And I've got the full quote here. Had they have become demoralized as did the troops at Gates' defeat near Camden, as did some of Green's militia at Guilford, they would have brought disgrace and disaster upon the Whig cause. So it was a pivotal moment in the battle. Um, one of a few, but probably one of the most pivotal moments of the battle. And listen to another quote about Campbell's conduct in the battle. It shows once again what kind of leader he is. Wherever he was, dashing here and there along the line, was himself a host. His clarion voice rang out above the clash of resounding arms and the peals of successive riflery, encouraging his heroic mountaineers to victory. So it's that personal brand of leadership. He is leading from the front. Uh, what one of the Patriot participants wrote about their commanders, um, about their officers, was that they were leaders rather than commanders. So they're showing they are uh, embodying what they want their men to do, what they want their men to be. 
So, um, another moment in the battle, um, very hotly contested moment. Once the um, Overmount men, Campbell's men, gain the crest, um, they're in a firefight with Loyalists up on top of the hill, uh, only 30 or 40 yards away from the Loyalists. Hotly contested action up near where our Centennial Monument is now. And in the thick of that, he's out in front of his men, and he yells uh, once again some encouraging words. Boys, remember your liberty. Come on, come on, my brave fellows. Another gun, another gun will do it. Um, Campbell rides his horse until it's exhausted. And when the horse uh, is too exhausted to push anymore, he dismounts and he's leading on foot from the front. His coat is off, his shirt collar is open. Now, at the close of the battle, when the loyalists are trying to surrender, um, he shows his leadership again. Um, at this point, by trying to allow the loyalists to surrender to get the patriots to stop firing into their ranks. A lot of the patriots want revenge for what's been going on in the back country, um, different atrocities committed by loyalists and British, and so some are keeping firing. So Campbell actually steps in front of his own men, um, one man in particular, Evans, he says, Evans, for God's sake, stop firing. It is murder to shoot now, for they have raised the flag. And he's running up and down his line in front of his men saying, cease firing, for God's sake, cease firing. So once again, showing his leadership and showing his character. Now another facet of his character uh, is shown in his treatment of the British and the Loyalists, uh, especially in, in Southwest Virginia, but on the Kings Mountain campaign as well. Um, Campbell is a hard, harsh man. Um, that was what the backcountry demanded. Uh, these are hard people who are used to hardship. Um, they are used to violence. Um, and that's the kind of character that the predominantly Scots-Irish backcountry demands. Um, so he is, he is hard. He is harsh. He's swift and severe in his judgment against the loyalists and against the British that he encounters. Um, he hangs British agents who have been trying to incite uh, the Indian nations out on the frontier, and he does this without trial. And he uh, condones the uh, military tribunal that is set up after the Battle of Kings Mountain at Biggerstaff's Plantation, uh, where uh, a court-martial sentences 36 Tories to death and hangs nine before the Patriot commanders grant a reprieve. So once again, swift, harsh justice. And in uh, Washington County, the Loyalists actually call him the bloody tyrant of Washington County because of uh, the type of treatment that they receive. But once again, it's that um, hard, harsh um, man that's used to hardship uh, and that is accustomed to violence that is what the backcountry demands at this time. Now, Campbell uh, later on goes on to support the Continental Army under Nathaniel Green in the Guilford Courthouse campaign. Uh, when Lord Cornwallis and the British Army push into North Carolina and are threatening Virginia, Nathaniel Green reaches out to William Campbell for assistance. He asks for a thousand riflemen. Uh, but Campbell is having to deal with issues on multiple fronts. Um, he's defending the lead mines uh, that are in his portion of uh, Virginia because it's crucial for supporting the war effort. He's keeping an eye on loyalists in his area, on the Indian nations in his area, and also is preparing to defend the area in case either one of these groups decide to mount an insurrection. So he's got a lot going on. And he tells Green he can't support him with a thousand riflemen, but he does come into Green's camp. And the numbers vary. It's between 60 and 200 riflemen that he brings with him uh, on the Guilford Courthouse campaign. And he and his riflemen are assigned to a corps of observation with Light Horse Harry Lee uh, and some other cavalry and, and other riflemen as well. And they perform admiral, admirably in the Guilford Courthouse campaign. Um, technically, Cornwallis claims the field and claims victory, uh, but he loses a third of his fighting force at Guilford. Um, so when Green uh, 
um, is writing um, accounts of the battle the next day in his general orders. He praises Campbell and Campbell's uh, rifle regiment. And a few days later, he actually writes to Campbell personally, thanking him for his service. And I'll read a portion of that letter that he sent. Your faithful services and the exertions which you have made to second the efforts of Southern arms claims my warmest thanks. It would be ungenerous not to acknowledge my entire approbation of your conduct and the spirited and manly behavior of the officers and soldiers under you. So he recognizes uh, what Campbell has done in the Guilford Courthouse campaign with those words. Now, he, he is given permission by Green to return home back to Southwest Virginia, uh, which he does when he goes back. Once again, he's fulfilling those duties, protecting the land, or protecting the lead mines, uh, defending his territory against the Loyalists, against the Indians. Um, so stepping right back into that role. He also steps back into the role of a representative in the Virginia House of Delegates. Um, when the Marquis de Lafayette writes a letter to the Virginia House of Delegates in the summer of 1781 requesting military assistance against the British invasion, which Cornwallis is continuing into Virginia, uh, fellow delegates pretty quickly select William Campbell as who is going to lead the defense um, of Virginia, their choice. Uh, so they elect him uh, as Brigadier General. He receives a promotion to Brigadier General. And this wasn't a hard choice for them. It only took two days for them to decide who they were going to send. And it's because of the kind of leader William Campbell was. He has a reputation as a solid leader, uh, a solid military presence. Uh, he has that charisma that's needed. And his physical appearance as well is one that demands respect. So he is pretty quickly their choice. And he reinforces Lafayette with a company of 800 riflemen. He is in the very early stages of the Yorktown campaign. But unfortunately, his life and his career as a military uh, leader and civil servant is cut short. Um, he goes out of commission with a complaint of uh, pain in his chest. And just a few days after running a fever and complaining of this pain in his chest, he dies of an apparent heart attack on August 20, 22nd, 1781. Um, so a man who is in his late 30s, early 40s, his life is cut short tragically uh, before the victory at Yorktown. But getting back to the original question, why is he the most significant leader in the, in the or patriot leader in the backcountry? He is exactly the kind of leader, the kind of man that the backcountry needs and that it deserves. Uh, in this uh, Scots-Irish culture, in what the backcountry is, it needs men like William Campbell who are leaders, who have strong uh, personalities, who have charisma, who lead from the front, that is the kind of leader that the backcountry demands, the kind of leader it deserves, and that is who William Campbell is. The second reason he is the most significant patriot leader in the backcountry is because of his service on the Kings Mountain campaign specifically. In that heat of battle, when he manages to convince his men to come back after each bayonet charge, something Patriot Militia had not been able to do in the southern backcountry. The battle hinged on that, and it's because of his personal style of leadership that his men turn around and come back, and the Overmountain men and the Patriot Army is able to gain the crest and gain the victory at Kings Mountain. And lastly, it's uh, Campbell's ability to navigate complexity. When you think about what he was having to do, what roles he was having to fulfill and the duties he's having to perform. He's a civic leader, um, he's in the Virginia House of Delegates, he's a local justice, but he's also a military leader. He's defending the lead mines against loyalist or Indian attack. He's defending the frontier against those Indian nations that are out on the border. He's keeping an eye on the loyalists that are in his community, uh, defending his community. 
He's filling all of these roles and navigating this complexity and even being able to support other Patriot leaders in other areas, going on the King's Mountain campaign, supporting the Continental Army under Nathaniel Green, and later with the Marquis de Lafayette. That is the kind of leader that is the most significant Patriot leader in the backcountry. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that I've convinced you that my leader, William Campbell, is the most significant Patriot leader in the backcountry, uh, but I will leave it to my fellow Rangers to try to convince you otherwise and present their cases. Uh, we'll have Ranger William representing the Overmountain Victory Trail up next, followed by Ranger Roland in Calpins National Battlefield, and then Ranger Adrian down at 96 National Historic Site will close us out. Thanks for tuning in. Please leave any questions or comments in the comments section below, and we will see you again soon.